episode six of Lionheart Radio. I'm your host, Rick Alexander, founder of Lou Aviv Supplement Company. I'm with my co-host, Memo. Memo, co-founder, Lou Aviv. And we're with Claudia as well. Hi, guys. Claudia Challoner, doctor of physical therapy with Muma RX and nationally ranked powerlifter. So today we're going to put Claudia in the hot seat and we're going to talk about physical therapy. Woohoo! A realm that I need extensive knowledge in but do not have. <laughs> as I would say my myself. knowledge is okay, but my level of practitionership if that's a thing not that good yeah i don't do nearly as much and i can probably speak for a lot of people when i say that i don't do nearly what i should when it comes to prehab yeah. rehab i'm pretty good because i usually don't have a choice because something hurts yes and but, that that would be common yeah. for sure people i think as a society we tend to be more reactive instead of proactive when it comes to our bodies mm -hmm. a lot of us only go to the doctor or go see a pt when we have an actual injury that's either limiting our function of what we love to do or right. we have pain <laughs> so yeah, yeah. it's not because you know we're de we decrease this range of motion or something uh, so we tend to only go to those practitioners when we have something that's actually yeah. like going on that's but Western the things medicine. have been going on for longer than when that pain actually right, arrives right. yeah and that's western medicine as a whole right yeah I mean. yeah 100 mm -hmm. you know we're always you know looking for that pill or that quick fix and so that's not really the case it's, mm -hmm. i don't i don't really think that there is a is a magic pill yeah. to make it all go away now definitely that's something that's going to mask the symptoms but is that really impacting the underlying cause of the issue probably not right so yeah i think if you're going to live an active lifestyle at all uh prehab is something that you need to become familiar with yeah and as an athlete that's something that is becoming more and more popular i think in big part because crossfit yeah got a necessity <laughs> had yeah. to like really find uh a niche for prehab yeah no i, I think um i mean kelly starrett like definitely paved a lot of the road mm -hmm. with coming up with mobility wad and things, um, getting, you know, self mobilization and stuff out there. Cause there was some out there, but I think it really became more popular whenever he started highlighting some of those things, as far as the prehab and taking care of your tissues and everything before you have that injury. But then if you do have the injury, you know, you can do a, B and C to help overcome that. Right. So the physical therapy aspect interests me specifically though, because well, just a while ago, I thought I had shin splints. I was sure open and shut case I have shin splints that's what's going on here I've had shin splints a bunch of times I've mm -hmm. been an athlete my whole life and so I'm treating the shin splints I'm icing and I'm yes kind of trying to roll out whatever and I <clears throat> got a massage from a physical therapist and they were like oh no you don't have shin splints you have really tight feet and they're causing you know the muscles on the outside of your leg which are the ITB and all that area is mm -hmm. really tight and really bound and she worked on my feet for you know 20 minutes and then I didn't have shin splints anymore. Yeah. And I think that's uh, really important for people to understand that just because you have pain in a particular area, people really want to get focused in on, oh, this is, this is my pain right at my shoulder joint, like mm -hmm. right there. There's my pain right there. And there's actually probably nothing wrong with their shoulder joint. It doesn't need to be stretched. It doesn't need to be strengthened or anything like that. Something else in their system needs to be worked on, like their maybe the thoracic spine or maybe their scapular stabilizers, or maybe they have a tightness in some other pattern within their body that's causing that shoulder joint to be the last man. It's that, that right. guy in the middle that's getting just the short end of the stick and finally he's fed up and... He's so it's now having pain. It's not necessarily referred pain. It's just a complex, yeah. like combination of this hurts, which made that hurt, which pulled that out of line. Which exactly. That kind of a thing. But yeah. Um, but then there's also the, um, the activity of referred pain because a lot of people that have maybe shoulder issues or scapula issues, uh, shoulder blade issues, uh, there's not necessarily anything wrong with that area. It might be referring from their neck. So mm. they might have something going on with their neck that's causing shoulder pain. And so that's kind of a different different way to look at it as Interesting. well. Yeah. And what, what got you into physical therapy in the first place? Um, so, I've, I mean, I've always been an athlete throughout my life mm -hmm. and always really into the hands-on piece of treatment. What I love about physical therapy is that movement and exercise is our medicine. 
and I love that. Mm -hmm. So I didn't really want to be the person that was prescribing medicine or anything like that. So I, I really like the hands-on piece of my job and the ability to help people move better. Mm -hmm. And and the, and I get to work with active individuals, which is fun, which is not necessarily uh, in all physical therapy um, clinics or practices. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. um, our our practices is very unique because I actually work out of CrossFit gyms. Mm -hmm. So most of my clientele are active, and they don't necessarily have to be a, a weightlifter or a CrossFitter. I mean, I have some people that just want to go hiking on the weekends, but they are they don't want an injury with hiking. So they come in and see me for, you know, different stabilization, um, exercises or whatever. So it's just fun to work with an active population sure. that care about an active lifestyle and moving well. So, so if I'm just a rando off the street right now, mm -hmm. I'm active weekend warrior type. Maybe mm -hmm. I run five K's. I like to lift weights, whatever that looks like. Mm -hmm. I have no knowledge of physical therapy, but just like with anyone, sometimes my knees hurt when I run a lot. Sometimes maybe my low back hurts like after I lift. Where where do you think you should start as far as like trying to figure this out? Like a movement screening with someone like yourself or buying a foam roller? Like where would you yeah, say is so a good starting the, point? The big thing is, I think we hit upon this with our uh, fitness industry talk, is there is so much information out there. Like so much. You can mm -hmm. YouTube pretty much anything that you want. Low back pain, foam roller. And you can find like a million different videos on different ways to do things. Uh -huh. And so, but not necessarily all of them are quality and, or that those people have any idea what they're talking about or have any type of degree or any kind of type of certification or anything. Mm -hmm. And so I think starting off with some type of movement screen, I think is most important. And it doesn't actually have to be with a physical therapist, but with, you know, a chiropractor, there's different people out there that do other movement screens and movement assessments. Mm -hmm. So I would just search out someone in your area that does do something like that, that can at least point you in a better direction as far as where to go for different exercises to help with, you know, if you have a current injury or prevent anything from happening in the future. Cause it's all, it's, it really comes down to, to movement patterns and, and how yeah. you are moving. Yeah. And then one of the problems, like we said before is, you know, maybe you do have low back pain, but you're treating a symptom of something. Exactly. That, you know. Yeah. I, I have so many people come to me like I have low back pain and they're foam rolling their low back, which I'm not a big fan of anyway, well, but <laughs> like, <laughs> we'll talk about that afterwards, Rick. <laughs> so, and, and, no, you know, so in some cases it might be okay, but for the majority of people, that's not going to do anything. And so, but if you rolled out your glutes or did some activation of your posterior chain or something took taken off the, or the front part of your legs, your quads, your hip flexors, um, that can, re that can relieve some of that tension that's happening at your low back. Um, you know, usually low back is not that area that's necessarily the problem. It's either like a super tight thoracic spine, which is that mid back mm -hmm. or something going on in your hips as well. So again, it's that middle man. Gotcha. So hips and mid back are typically to blame for low back pain. So a, a lot of times it can be. Yeah. And I, I see a lot of people with, um, with low back symptoms that have you know, poor hip mobility or poor hip activation of some sort or poor core activation or really tight thoracic spines. And unfortunately that happens a lot with a lot of sitting mm -hmm. too with a lot of desk jobs um uh, desk jockeys that try to go into their weekend warrior <laughs> events and, <Yeah. laughs> and mess up some stuff <laughs> so yeah i mean it's a double-edged sword because you want that person active right but then what happens is they're super active and then they go to, to that prone position or that sitting position and then all of those things tighten up is that accurate uh yeah 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 um i think i think that's where it's important for those even the weekend warriors or the people that are just going on, you know, some hikes on the weekends and stuff to, to get the, some kind of movement screen mm -hmm. so that way they can better prepare themselves and prevent any, any types of imbalances that they might have, but they don't necessarily know because they don't have any pain yet. Mm -hmm. So, so one of the main problems that people have with CrossFit is the high rep load. Mm -hmm. Um, oh, and you, you used to CrossFit before you got into powerlifting. Yeah. And then you're also a physical therapist. So I kind of yeah. just want to hear, I guess, what your point of view is um, as far as that. Is that 
concerned. Yeah. Uh, I think, I mean, I, of course I've, I've crossfitted for, you know, like eight or nine years off and on. So right. I definitely, I, I love CrossFit. Mm-hmm. I think a lot of people get injured because of those underlying imbalances and underlying poor movement patterns. And they try to advance too quickly into things. Um, as far as like a newer athlete trying out CrossFit. Mm -hmm. Now, some of the advanced level athletes that are getting injuries and stuff, it's a lot on your body. Like it really is. Um, and if, especially if you're not, you know, correcting those imbalances or taking care of your body as needed before and after those workouts, like something's going to fail eventually. Yeah. If you do any one thing <clears throat> over and over again, time after time, if I'm like, if I just pick up this water bottle off the table, like a million times, yeah. I'm going to probably have an overuse injury of picking up that water bottle right. just because that's the, that's the way it is. That's the way your body works. So you're going to eventually have something break down. Now to say that that's going to be everyone. No, definitely not. Especially if you take the, the right steps in order to right. prevent that. People, something people overlook too is there's injuries in every single there sport. totally is and yeah I, and if you really look at like the top crossfitters like I, I mean I have no statistics to back this up it doesn't seem like the they're getting injured any more than NFL players or there's to- figure skaters right. or yeah, anyone else who's at the top of their game yeah or like gymnasts like they have a, a huge rate of yeah. of injury and stuff so it's not just CrossFit but I think a lot of it is because you're getting a lot of common people off the street that Mm -hmm. are going into CrossFit. I think that's where a lot of people get this whole like mentality of, Oh, you're going to get injured doing CrossFit. Yeah. Um, and I think a lot of it could be prevented of having more of a, a fundamental, uh, type of program to progress people into that. Like they probably shouldn't pick up a barbell for a long time. Yeah. That's just me. Um, but they should be doing more like unilateral work, that you don't really get in CrossFit unless you do that random pistol. But who newbie CrossFitter who's right. been doing it for two months can do a pistol. Like, not very many. Right. Uh, so, you know, trying to find those imbalances and unilateral work, lateral work, you know, side to side work, you don't really get a whole lot of that with CrossFit. Uh, there's really not a whole lot of rotational work. And, you know, rotation has its pros and cons uh, mm-hmm. for many people. But, uh, working those things to try to find some of those underlying patterns that could be causing them uh, issues when they do pick up that barbell and snatch. Right. Or when they're doing their muscle up or whatever it might be. So. Yeah. And there's a huge difference between being an athlete and, and working out for a lifestyle. Exactly. And I think that's CrossFit really has a problem because they really politicize the, the games aspect because it's really cool to watch and you see these Yeah, it's out awesome. There. Yeah. Right. But then everyday person in the gym... They're not going to be able to train like that. I mean. Yeah. And, and I don't really, I definitely don't want to take anything away from the person that's coming to the gym and working their butt off. And I, cause I love that. I love that they're trying to like, they're aspiring. They look at the games, they look at those athletes and that's inspiring to them. I love that. Yeah. But we also need to make sure you're taking the right steps for those athletes and giving them the fundamentals that they need. Cause a lot of those people have never done a sport they have just been working a desk job for the last 10 years mm-hmm. and they, they just want to work out and stay healthy. And so they're going to have to definitely do some different exercises versus the, the competitive athlete that's coming in. Right. Right. For I sure. think he's definitely gotten better. No, I, I yeah, 100%. Years. I, I like think you it, said Kelly Starrett, he's, he definitely did some huge things with the CrossFit and just any kind of athlete in general. Yeah. I, I think the, the physical therapy, chiropractic, those types of realms are coming into um, CrossFit and even weightlifting yeah. and stuff and, and definitely making an impact for people, which is great. So as a physical therapist, do you believe in chiropractic doctors? I think there's good and bad. Okay. Just like there's good and bad physical sure. therapists. Yeah, um, yeah. So I... I've had yeah. really good luck with chiropractic. Yeah, I, I think it's going to vary with everyone. I'm not a big fan of the snap crack, see you later, like 10 mm. minute deal but oh, if so that, that's me i just want to keep if that, that if that if that works for you if that works for you then if it's working for you then that's freaking fantastic yeah. what i have a problem with is i've i've seen some patients that have been going to a cairo for like six years and they're coming to see me and i'm like so what are you coming to see me for 
yeah, I have this low back pain. I'm like, okay, that's great. You know, have you, has you seen anyone for it? Yeah, I've been seeing a Cairo. How long have you been seeing them? Six years, and you still have back pain? Hmm. So, that's a good point. Where, where, what are we going on? What's going right. on here? So, I think that's where you need to like take matters into your own hand and realize that okay, maybe this isn't working for me because not everything that a physical therapist do is gonna is gonna work for you. Right. So, um, I think there's good and bad in, in every kind of profession that you're looking at. So. Hmm. Okay, so we talked about low back pain in CrossFit. Mm -hmm. uh, that's an obvious one because there's a lot of flexion and a lot of high rep, deadlift, that kind of a thing. Yep. Um, what what other injuries do you see as far as... Shoulder is probably the second most common. Low back and shoulder are probably mm -hmm. the most common ones that I see. Yeah. Yeah. And so, like, do you see a lot of slap tears in the shoulder? Or is it is there another etiology just like the low back where it's usually hips or thoracic? For shoulder... The shoulder is very complicated. Um, there's a lot going on, and so I've seen a lot of different things going on. Um, but definitely muscle imbalances, anterior, posterior, front and back. Mm -hmm. um, again, that thoracic spine is going to play a huge impact on how your shoulder is moving um, and how your shoulder blade is moving on your rib cage when you go to lift overhead or try to do some kind of rotation with holding a front rack position or going into your kipping pull up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so there's a, there's a lot of load on the shoulders with, with CrossFit. And so, you know, I, I'm a strong believer that if you can't do a, and I'll probably get some, some hit for this, but if you cannot do a strict pull up, there is no way you have no business doing kipping or better yet, butterfly pull-ups mm -hmm. so you know a lot of people believe that i think yeah so yeah. It, you need and that's to do with the, the tissue right the yeah you tissue. cannot you because can, with a with a kip that's a huge eccentric load quickly mm -hmm. and so that's a lot of demand on that shoulder and if you don't have the strength to do a strict pull-up like you have no business doing that mm -hmm. so so i have a 360 degree labral tear in nice. both shoulders and then i have mm. some frayed bicep tendons in my right nice and i got them um in the midst of crossfitting and i don't blame it on crossfit at all i'm like yeah, yeah that was me i i was in the gym for like four hours a day you know <laughs> but what I'm trying, I always try to figure it out because I'm like, before I started CrossFit, I could do well over 20, 30 strict pull ups. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I doubt that tissue strength because I had already done a lot of volume up until yeah, then. Yeah. Um, and then on top of that, my overhead position is pretty good. Like, I, I can narrow grip overhead squat very easily. Yeah. So I always try to think, like, do you think it could just be, because that's a pretty common injury. Like, I know at least four or five people that also have a labral tear in their shoulder yeah. or rotator cuff injury. Mm -hmm. Do you think that's from volume or? Uh, it could be from volume. It still could be from something else going on in your system that's leaving that shoulder susceptible. There's a lot of people um, now that like mobility wad and all that stuff has gotten huge. People always come to me and like, oh yeah, so I'm super tight in my overhead position and you know it's all about my mobility like mobility is like killing everyone like because they don't have mobility it's like yeah. causing every issue under the sun I'm like not really um uh, just because you have an injury doesn't necessarily mean you have poor mobility anywhere like you can have great mobility and that's what the problem is because you want to find a balance between mobility and stability because you find this a lot with uh, gymnasts or people that are over flexible and that do too much stretching and then they don't have stability at those new end ranges mm -hmm. that they've gotten so that's why i don't too necessarily stretching i don't necessarily agree with every single person under the planet doing romwad <laughs> so some it people can't hurt right some I mean, people definitely need it 100 percent, they need that some people do not mm -hmm. and so that's where you need to make sure that you're getting some kind of assessment done because stretching could actually be worsening the problem and you might need some more stability exercises or working on some of those deeper underlying patterns in your in your body mm -hmm. uh to address address the issue so that's really important because people i think now have gotten into this oh something hurts so i'm just gonna smash it and i'm just gonna stretch it mm -hmm. which could be actually causing the problem like to become worse okay mm -hmm. i've heard i've heard of problems where yo people that are really successful in yoga mm -hmm. move to lifting in that like power lifting and they have a problem because they can't 
stay tight in certain positions that yeah. powerlifting would would need you to be and then they get injuries that way yeah so that that's, yeah sa- same kind of concept okay. um a lot i see a lot of it with females tends to be more females not necessarily it's always females it can be men too at the bottom of a squat they get the butt wink or the dreaded butt wink or whatever they get right. the tucking over under there's nothing wrong with their mobility at all one like they have full um, range of motion everywhere it's totally fine okay but it's because they're losing that tension in their system they do not have control of those muscles at that end range okay. and they can't maintain that tightness so just because someone has a butt wink does not mean they need to go stretch something or they need to go roll something out it could be that they're losing tension and that's the last thing that they need to do is go roll something out okay so and that butt wink that's when you're you're but tips at the bottom. Yeah, at the so bottom basically squat. you go from neutral spinal position, neutral spinal position with, with your pelvis, mm-hmm. and it tucks under. So if you want to think about like a pooping dog, mm-hmm. kind of the same thing. Oh, well, I'm thinking about it now. <laughs> 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 but you can also have the opposite um, when you get that too much extension at your lower back, which can increase your butt wink at the bottom. Yeah. So if you think about like strip a butt... Okay, mm-hmm. you're trying to really stick your butt out, overextend your lower back. When you're going down to a squat, you're going to end up with a butt wink at the bottom because you have nowhere else to go in your in your system. So. Okay. Mm-hmm. So as much as we say, like, you need to get a movement screen and you should see a PT, there's going to be people that just aren't going to. Yeah. Are there problem areas or, or areas you think, just based on your knowledge of CrossFit programming, that people should specifically focus on? Like ankle uh, mobility, hip, knees, hips, like... Yeah, which, I mean, it just depends on what kind of background you're coming from, too. But mm-hmm. I think that the amount of, of squatting that we do, I mean, we do a lot of squatting with, with CrossFit. And so I think you really can't go wrong with working your quads and your hip flexors. Now, I'm not talking about doing, like, a self psoas release. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm just talking about, like, doing some some rolling out or some gentle, so like... Psoas is, like, front of your hip. Yeah. Barbie muscle, right? Yeah, deep, yeah. deep within there. Yeah. Okay. Um, doing some, like, quad stretching and uh, rolling out quads, I think those are, like, really good go-tos as far as if you're going to roll something out. Glutes are also a really good one. Um, there's not a whole lot of people that are like, oh, you should not do that. Like, some things I'm like, you should need to stop doing that as far as rolling out goes. But mm-hmm. those two are pretty, like pretty safe bets to to start working on um but a lot of people also don't stretch their quads efficiently so your hip flexors cross over and attach into your lower spine Mm -hmm. so your your lumbar so your low back and so if you are think about like the couch stretch if anyone's familiar with the couch stretch but if not if you just think about a hip flexor stretch where you're in a lunge position on the floor one foot forward one foot back in a lunge and you're trying to stretch out one of your hips that would be the back leg. So if you are extending your low back, if you're arching your low back, you're not going to get as an efficient stretch on that hip flexor area if you're extended in your low back. So I see plenty of people that try to crank into a couch stretch position where the front part of your foot is up against a wall. Yep. Your knee is bent, and then you have the other leg. It's like the typical quad stretch, but with like amped resistance. up. Yeah. Right. So I see plenty of people cranking themselves into that position with their back completely arched, mm. and so <laughs> Rick, we need to talk about. Yeah. This. <laughs> we need to talk afterwards. <laughs> okay. This Just making some you, guilty <laughs> guilty faces here. Um, so yeah, so you want to make sure that you're keeping your back in a neutral position when you are doing that because then you're missing that that piece of that fascial line of, of those hip flexors because they attach into your low spine. So if you're extending it, arching it, then you're kind of shortening it. Okay. Yeah. I went to a movement RX screen, or I guess it was like a clinic a while ago, a couple oh, years okay. ago. Yeah, yeah. And Teresa, she was telling me that she was doing some kind of release in my psoas uh-huh. and she said to do it before you go to sleep at night and you'll sleep better. Do you know anything about that? Um, so, well, you have a lot of neurovascular structures around your psoas. Okay. So sometimes working, um, around neurovascular structures, um, the thoracic spine is also the same way cause it, um, houses some of your nervous system through there. Um, mm-hmm. uh, 
And so s sometimes working on those certain areas can kind of give you almost like a down regulation for the systems. Okay. Not always, but for some people it can. Uh, so then that would probably be what she referred to as far as sleeping better. Yeah. Because it probably was giving you some kind of down regulation. Okay. So, yeah. And then what is your, okay, so moving on a little bit from CrossFix, I know probably have people that do all kinds of different things. Yeah. Um, and since I'm currently obsessed with running, we're going to go down that aisle right now. <laughs> um, but I, I'm curious to know what you think about um, running pattern, whether it should be corrected by a shoe or whether you should correct the way that you run. So I used to, I would have knee problems growing up and hip problems growing up when I ran. Mm -hmm. um, I read Born to Run and a couple okay. of their like minimalist type books. Yeah, and yeah. When the Vibram thing got really big, the Five yeah, Fingers, yeah. whatever. Yeah. But I did change my the way that I run so that I'm much more of a midfoot runner. Yeah. And I never, I virtually never have knee pain when I run or hip pain ever. Mm -hmm. I mean, even to the point where when I ran that 70 miles the other day, I had no, not a single ounce of knee pain. Yeah. Um, and I also run with a minimalist shoe. So any kind of support, I feel like I instantly know it and it could be maybe a little bit, uh, just in my head, but I'm just curious what, what your opinion is, or if you see a lot of runners with knee pain or that kind of thing. Um, I definitely see runners with knee pain. Um, I'm not a running coach by any means. So, mm -hmm. uh, our other colleague, Anne Marie Alf, she would be more knowledgeable as far as the, the running piece of things. Oh, okay. But I always try to go for for less for people i would rather them fix like why are they having knee pain you know is it some kind of imbalance that they have at their hip that can be addressed first mm -hmm. before we go and change their shoes or go to minimal shoes or something like that because if there's something that we can change within the body system mm -hmm. then i'm going to work on that before we go and change a bunch of other things oh okay so yeah and have you dealt much with plantar fasciitis yeah so that's could you explain that um, so plantar fasciitis, it's just like inflammation, a lot of stuff going on at the bottom of your foot. Yep. So you have a lot of, um, connector tissue underneath the, the bottom of your foot or uh -huh. your arch. And so sometimes that can get inflamed, irritated. Usually you get pain, um, pretty localized in the mornings is usually worse for people. Um, right at the connection of your plantar fascia and your heel. So think of your heel, mm -hmm. okay, and go more towards like the arch of your foot. Um, it's usually like pretty pinpoint specific right. pain in that area. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I've seen people have it that have high arches, and I've also seen people have it with, with collapsing arches or flat feet. Mm -hmm. So I've seen it with both. And again, that's something that... It's, there's usually nothing wrong with that area. That is what's been like the middle new man and the last straw um, with other things going on in their body. Okay. Mm -hmm. Like what? So it could be... The only um, reason I'm asking is plantar fasciitis. I've seen a lot of people... With yeah, runners. I've, I've had it, well, at work when I hike a bunch, I, I get it. Yeah, yeah. So, well, also too, like, you know, the ball that you have that you're working on your foot right now, uh -huh. like... Self-care for that is super important, especially if you're in boots, mm -hmm. which you are for work and stuff, right. right? Like if you're in boots, especially heavy boots all day, I think it's really important to give some care to your feet after you've been in boots all day. Yeah. Um, or if you're someone that is upstanding for your job all day, every day, like definitely something to address. If you're a woman that wears heels all the time, please stop. <laughs> and that would probably solve a lot of your issues. Um, so what kind of care? Like just some. Yeah. Just... So you can do lacrosse ball. You can even do like a lacrosse ball size uh -huh. spiky ball mm -hmm. uh, or even a golf ball. Um, and just working on the tissue at the bottom of your foot, getting some nice blood flow okay. into that area. Remember back in the day, a thing was people would freeze water bottles. Yeah, was yeah. Was about about did yeah, the yeah. ice have anything to do with that, or they're just trying to build? So it on? it could have, um, but it's also giving a harder surface too. To um, so the kind of dull the pain. A little yeah, because when you use ice, it's it's going to definitely gate your pain, mm -hmm. and so it's just because it's a different neural pathway. And so it's going to dull yeah. that symptom. Is it, is it fixing anything? Probably not. Okay. So. Yeah. Yeah. 
since I've gone to a minimalist shoe and like a zero drop heel, I mm-hmm. feel like mine has completely gone away. It used to be something I would get even from like a half marathon. Yeah. And f- and for you, that might have been the, the <clears throat> fix for you for mm-hmm. sure because it changed your running pattern. For someone else, it might not be the case because they have like a hip weakness or, or you know sure. s- something like that yeah. going on. So that might be the different... Uh, different issue to address yeah, the game with changer for me i had bad uh, or a uh, knee pain after running and manny or uh, okay. coach at atr yeah, well, yeah. he used to be at atr we went through a day and all we did was just go through our running and it, it's made a big difference yeah totally i have very little pain now if any. yeah 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 so i think if you are a runner and you are experiencing um any kind of issue if you are not interested in doing like a, a more of a movement screen type of thing I would go go work with a running coach. Like get your running addressed because yeah. you could save your <laughs> save a world of hurt yeah. if yeah. you just really like and if I, you I just fix your running position. And there's plenty of running coaches out there. I mean, do your research. Right. Um, that you could just maybe address a couple of things and and feel way better with your runs. But that's like a running coach, not a running stork. Because I a lot of times. Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Two totally different things. Right. Everybody, every 100%. Running store has treadmills lined up now, and they like train these. I'm not going to talk shit about these people, but <laughs> they train these people to look at you run, and so they'll watch you run on a treadmill for a couple minutes, and then they're like, okay, we're going to give you this shoe based on the way that your heel is hitting or whatever. And, and we're going to go just, with this one because it's more expensive. <laughs> right. It's just crazy. I'm like, get a running coach. If. Yeah, if anything, yeah. totally. Yeah, run barefoot on the beach and just see how your foot hits the ground, and then maybe try to figure that out. Yeah, um, but if you're gonna do it, yeah, get a running coach. And yeah, a lot 100%. of people think that going getting a, to the running store and having them give you a shoe based on how your I think you're catering to a problem that you could fix with mechanics instead. Exactly, of and that's what shoe. I'm. Yeah, I'm all about fixing movement versus let's just tape it. Let's you know do all this other stuff to it or put an orthotic in or Mm -hmm. do this or that. So, yeah. So before I got into CrossFit and Olympic weightlifting and that whole uh, realm, I was always taught to squat with, like, you should be able to squat barefoot, right? But then when you get into CrossFit and Oli, an Olympic lifting shoe has a raised heel Mm -hmm. in order to open your hips up is the way that I'm Mm -hmm. understanding it Mm -hmm. so that you have better mechanics at the bottom of a squat. Mm -hmm. What is your opinion on that so if you're a random or uh, just everyday crossfitter like should you wear lifters or not is yeah. that what you're asking yep. um okay so first off stop everyone should stop trying to look like everyone else in their squat everyone's squat is going to look different okay um you cannot teach a group full of you know 30 people to squat now basic squat mechanics should be all be the same okay but everyone's squat's not going to look the same because everyone's body structures are all different my hip socket looks different than yours Mm -hmm. my femur length and torso proportion is going to be completely different than yours or memos like it's all going to be different or versus like a 6'2 person you know totally different than 5'2 person (laughs) (laughs) um so my squat is going to look very different than someone else's okay so you have to keep that in mind so you can't tell everyone like Okay, set your feet up like this. All right, you're going to do this and that. Like, everyone's going to have a slight variation, and that's okay. That's totally fine. Um, Now, I'm all about you should be able to perform a ass-to-grass squat barefoot, unloaded. Now. Unloaded meaning without a bar. Without, no, yeah, yeah, no weight. Like, like if you're going to take a poo in the woods, like, you should be able to do that, okay? Um, But... This is unloaded, okay? Okay. So you're going to have probably, many people are going to have a lot of flexion in their, in their spine or rounding in their spine. When they squat. Yeah. Yep. If they, it's so. chest falls over kind of Yeah. Chest forward, like, you know, rounding back, but that's okay. That's just, uh, that's unloaded. That's totally healthy and normal to be able to do that without load. Without load. Okay. Yeah. You should be able to do that. You should be able to sit into a squat right now. And be totally fine with it. But if you're if your chest is falling over, we're talking hip tightness in your hips and low back, probably, right? Not necessarily. Okay. So when we talked about that stability piece earlier, it can totally be a stability piece. Um, but 
Now, if you're wearing lifters, especially if you're an Olympic lifter, like competitive, like heck yeah, wear those things. Like mm -hmm. that's just going to get you that little bit more advantage that you need and more stability. Advantage wear. Stability. Yeah. Stability. Okay. Yeah. Um, and also too, because you do have a little bit of lift, it's going to allow you to just maintain a little bit more upright position, uh -huh. which is going to be extremely beneficial for you. So heck yeah. If it yeah. like helps. It also helps then... with force acceleration off of the ground. So yeah. Like, like lifting. Totally. Yeah. 100% do it. Now, if you are someone that is, uh, let's say average Joe has been in a desk job for 10 years. He had played football in high school or something mm -hmm. and he's coming in horrible ankle mobility and can't squat. He can only squat to parallel without losing position at his low back mm -hmm. without flexing his low back. Um, so then I wouldn't want him trying to squat. Even if you like, kick his toes out and then he can go below parallel? <laughs> no, the, now this is like with already in that position. Okay. Like if he's already, because I'm all about a 10 to 15 degree of toe out. Okay. I, I don't. Always. I'm, I'm not a big fan of toes forward. Sorry. <laughs> no, I agree. I, yeah, I, I just don't. But I don't. when I was coming up, um, I have my National Academy of Sports Medicine. Okay. Okay. They preach toes forward. Yes. At least they did when I got it yeah. eight years ago or whatever. Yeah. Um, and then I got into CrossFit and Olympic weightlifting and instantly it was like toes out. And then, but for me, I'm like, well, I can go way deeper. I don't ever have yeah. pain when I squat. Um, and I found that people who have trouble getting below parallel, once you start moving their toes out. But I, that, no, that goes back into that, that unloaded position with the squat. Like if we were just to do a squat on the floor right now, yep. you should be able to squat Ask your grass, toes forward. I don't care what your back position looks like. If it's completely rounded, that's totally fine. But you should still be able to do that because then that proves that you have good ankle range of motion too okay. with toes completely forward. Now, if you can't perform an unloaded squat with toes forward, then we need to look at some things. Okay. For sure. Gotcha. Um, so you don't really want to try with CrossFit or, you know, even with powerlifting or Olympic lifting or something, you know, you definitely want to make sure that you're addressing issues, whether it's mobility or stability with a lot of these people. When you are encouraging that below parallel squat and they're losing position at their back, they're losing position at their, you know, shoulder and thoracic spine, mm -hmm. and they're not able to main that, maintain that position, then maybe they shouldn't be trying to do that right now yeah. maybe they need to address the underlying cause because i see a lot of people in the gym that try to go to that below parallel position which is fantastic i'm all about below parallel but they lose position in their back and they're trying to do it loaded and then they end up with a back issue and this and that and so you need to address like the underlying causes of why they lose why they're losing position okay so. and that would be done with the movement screening yeah yeah or like i mean you know the um FMS, the SFMA, um, are, are great tools. The functional movement screen yep. are great tools that, you know, the a coach can, can find that stuff off online and stuff. Um, so, or go to a course yeah. and learn. So th that's great. Uh, you can find some great information just about like general imbalances people have from side to side, and then you can address those issues. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A good, how it was explained to me when I originally got certified to give the functional movement screen. Yeah. yeah. Um, for Athletes Performance Institute, it's the thing I went to a long time ago. Yeah. Uh, one of the coaches there, he explained it to me really well, and he was like, because I was an athlete at the time, and I was um, really into like triathlons and that sort of thing at the yeah. time, and I did that functional movement screening, and I did horribly, like <laughs> ankles really, I couldn't like step over the line and come back, yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> falling apart. And he, the way that he explained, it, he's like, you have the engine of a cannon, but you're shooting it out of a canoe. Yeah. And eventually you're going to tip over Yeah. and that's when stuff's going to go wrong. Yeah, exactly. So that's something to think with like, just because you're an athlete, just because you, you might be able to like destroy people in the gym, but that doesn't mean you're just getting away with it at yeah. this point. Right. And eventually you're going to end up with a massive injury Yeah. or multiple ones and it's, and it's going to suck. Right. So addressing yeah, just because you're super strong, just because you can do all these di different movements or, you know, whatever, does not mean that you actually move well underneath yeah. it all. It means you're really good at compensating. Right. <laughs> really good at hiding it. <laughs> yeah. And I think then time under tension, more volume 
they're going to like continue to bring these problems to the forefront and then totally you end up with a two torn labrums and a yeah. trade by yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not mentioning any names rick <laughs> uh, so what else um oh i also wanted to touch upon um something that's Im- definitely important is a lot of people come to me and they they either ask me, oh, okay, so should I get an MRI or should I get x-rays on my back or whatnot? Or maybe they had an MRI done on their, on their back mm-hmm. or their whatever joint. And then it says arthritis, degenerative disc, herniated disc, like all these terms and people like get totally freaked out. Um, and then they let the MRI or the x-ray like totally own them. Mm -hmm. My shoulder hurts. Oh, it's that, it's that bone spur, you know, it's that like, that's what's hurting, you know? Right. Oh, it's that it's, Oh, it's my, you know, like it's my herniated disc or it's my bulge disc at L4, L5. And and they asked me, they like, oh, okay, so I want to, can I bring in my MRI? Which is totally fine. I like, I will, I will have a look. I will help you. Exp- not that I can read right. x-rays, mm-hmm. but I can help explain like what the, the write-up says and yep. stuff. Um, and it's important to not let the MRI like be you mm-hmm. or the imaging be you. Cause that's not, you could, you could image most of the people in this gym right now. And over 50% would have some kind of disgeneration in their mm-hmm. back, some kind of herniation, bulge disc, you know, torn something and not have any pain whatsoever. But then they, you know, do a squat in poor form two weeks from now. And then it's all like, and then it flares up the whole process. Mm-hmm. And so it doesn't necessarily mean that, you know, you didn't get all of those injuries just from squatting that once. Right, right. <laughs> like, I'm sorry, you didn't, you didn't get two blown out discs, <laughs> yeah. you know, arthritis and all this stuff just from doing that five by five. Like yeah. probably not. That's probably been like 10 years, 20 years, ha- you know, you know, process of poor moving. Mm-hmm. And so I just think that's important for people to understand uh, because, you know, you don't necessarily get that information at the doctor. It's like, okay, well, do you want to get a cortisone shot? Do you want to get an MRI? Like, and so it's important for people to, to be educated on that stuff and just, yeah. and just make sure that it doesn't own you. Like that's not, that doesn't, right. the MRI, the image, just, that's a quick snip of that one point of time. That doesn't tell you anything about how you move and <clears throat> what and kind of imbalances that you have in your body. So, yeah. And yeah. then also coming from a doctor, you have to look into like, and not always, but you have to look into motive. You have to look into what would he do. So, for example, my torn labrum, it hurt a little bit. But when I did a lot of mobility, my yeah. overhead squat was still well over 300 pounds. Yeah. And the the guy's telling me, like, you have to get surgery. And I'm like, really? A surgeon's telling me I need to get surgery, yeah. obviously. Yeah, exactly. And, and people are like, well, that's crazy if you're not going to listen. And I'm like, well, what is the point of a joint, right? It's, it's uh, mobility. It's function. And I'm like talking to the doctor and I'm like, what? I can overhead squat over 300 pounds. Like, can you do that? Like, I don't want to be a dick here, but if you can't do that, maybe you need to get surgery. <laughs> <laughs> right? like, and, and I think that that's, that also brings up another point is <laughs> you know, people we've, I think we've done actually a couple of videos about how to find a PT or even just a healthcare, you know, practitioner uh-huh. for yourself. Um, if you are someone that likes to lift weights and does powerlifting or does CrossFit or whatever, like ask your PT or ask your Cairo or something, whoever you're working with, like, first off, if they know what like a snatch is or, you know, a deadlift, if they don't, then just go ahead and walk out the door. <laughs> yeah. And then, you know, cause that's important to you. If the, if those things are important to you and you're going to a practitioner, not, not to say there's anything wrong with those practitioners, but mm-hmm. it might not be the best for you as, as a person that, that loves to do that. So you need to find someone that at least knows the mechanics behind what you want to get back to and then how they're going to get you back there. So So instantly bring up a conversation and subtly put in Fran. Yeah. Just like, you know, Oh, deadlifted, you know, (laughs) so how much you snatch these days? (laughs) And then just look at the motion they make with the hands after you say snatch and you'll know where you're dealing with. If you say, yeah, deadlifted and they perform a squat, you might want to walk out the door. (laughs) If you say snatch and they get offended. Uh, Yeah. Yeah. 
<laughs> so, so yeah, I think that's that's important for for people to look into uh-huh. if you are looking for someone to you know do a movement screen with or or just get some treatment or whatever it might be. Yeah. So. Yeah, and and just to go back to my original point, something I was trying to say is not necessarily ignore medical advice. Obviously, yeah, no, but, no, totally not. But for me, I was looking at it and I'm like, well, I'm going to be down for nine months, you say. And then there's a 60% chance I'll never have full mobility. And I'm well like n- into that now. I'm like, if it's mm-hmm. just a little bit of pain, like, and it comes to me just doing the work and st- stretching it. I mean, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm like, well, I don't understand. Why would I go under the knife for this? Yeah. If I'm yeah, not decreased in function, right? Yeah, exactly. And you've got to, and again, like you, you need to find that practitioner that's going to be, that's going to be good for you. Mm-hmm. Like that's going to know what, what you do. And what you need to get back to, mm-hmm. so that's important. Yeah, if their answer is stop doing what you're doing, then oh yeah, if it if if your practitioner tells you stop squatting, yeah. you better be yeah. running out that yeah. door. <laughs> yeah. Unfortunately, that's the norm. Yeah, it is. I no, think, I've yeah. I've had plenty of people that have come to me fed up, and I I've been on that side. It sucks. I've been to, I went to a PT myself when I um, was injured when I was doing CrossFit and. I was really having trouble with my muscle up and that was what was causing me the most pain Mm -hmm. and he, they didn't know what a muscle up was. And so it was really frustrating. They're like, well, why are you lifting over your head? Like, why are you doing that? Right. Because I love it. Like, this is what I love to do. Yeah. And they pretty much just told me like to stop doing it. Yeah. And then, and then you just get pissed off. Right. And then you don't want to. You don't want to do anything they say because you have no respect for them at that point. You're like, well, no, well, screw you. And so you want to make sure that, you know, you can find that person that that understands you. Uh, Because I've I've seen plenty of patients that have come to me that's like, oh, yeah, my doctor told me to to stop squatting Mm -hmm. or I shouldn't be deadlifting or I shouldn't be lifting that weight over my head. Or, you know, well, and it's like, you're, what are you, you're going to go through the rest of your life and not pick up anything. I know. And I'm like, so they told pounds, you like, not to squat. Like, so how are you going to use the bathroom? Yeah. Or how are you going to get up and down from the chair when you're 70 years old? Right. Like, I'm sorry. That's probably make not. Use. If you stop. Exactly. Squatting. Right. You're going to yeah. need total hip replacements and total knee replacements. Right. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. I think that's actually really good advice because a lot of times you see people, they just become a slave to their diagnosis and what that's supposed to look like. Yeah. And then they don't. Yeah. Now, we might need to address the pattern of, of how you're doing those things for sure. But I think, you know, just stopping that is is definitely not not the answer. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and your original point of movement and exercise being the the prescription to fix the problem. I think yeah. that's, that's a reason right there to go to a physical therapist when you're having any kind of biomechanical yeah. injury and a physical therapist that's going to fit your needs. Mm-hmm. So again, cause there's plenty of physical therapists that have no idea what a snatch is or what a deadlift is. So, which is sad, but you know, anyway, beside the point, right, right. <laughs> so make sure that you find a physical therapist that, that fits your needs. Okay. For sure. Cool. All right. So Good stuff, man. wrap it up. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, Thanks guys. Thanks. Chip the whip. Thanks for listening to Lionheart Radio. Don't forget to rate us and download our other episodes. For your supplement needs, go to louisvive.com. And for your sports therapy needs, visit movement-rx.com. So you won't forget this Midwest nigga be the coldest. Cleveland is the city where it's hustle or you hopeless. And my closet like a stove, bitch. Only difference is you ain't gonna find this in no stove, bitch. I'm fresher than your whole clique.